In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a custom drop-down menu animation using Origami Studios. Let's get started. So to get started, I'm opening up a brand new origami project. If you're brand new to origami and haven't used it much before, I really recommend watching my intro video. In that video, I go over the whole interface and how to get started with the program. So jumping right into it, I'm going to make a drop-down menu animation that is for desktop. So initially I set my device to MacBook Pro, but you could set it to any of the following computer sizes. To begin, I'm going up to this plus area and then clicking rectangle. When I do, a rectangle is placed on the screen with some default properties. I'm going to center align it and change the width and the height of it. I'm also going to make the inside of it white. And when I do, you can't see it on the screen anymore because the background is white. So I'm going to modify the color fill and make that a gray. I'm also going to change some properties like the radius of it and add a shadow. I'm actually going to move this rectangle a little bit upward because I know I'm going to want to include the animation to fall downward over here. So instead, I'm going to make it pin to the top of the screen and then move it down. I'm also going to want some text to be in here by default. So I'm going to go to this plus again, go down to text, place that layer, and then have some default text in here and place it within that text box. And I'm also just going to modify the color of it as well. Next, I'm going to add a little arrow over here so it's clear that this is a drop down menu. So now I have this whole element and I'm going to basically add an animation when this drop down menu is tapped on. So, first, I'm going to take all of these elements and put it in a group, call it Command G, and call it drop down. When I do the shadow, it disappears because it's only applied to this element. So instead, I'm going to apply that same shadow to the whole drop down menu. So I'm going to grab that color that I used and apply the same radius. So now with that layer selected, I'm going to add some animation work. So initially, I'll just say touch and then tap. So when this drop down menu is tapped on, I'm going to start some interactions. So to begin with, I'll just have this arrow rotate upward. 180 degrees. So when this is tapped on, I'm going to turn on a switch that will transition the arrow into two states. This arrow has a rotation of zero across the board for X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to have it pivot in the center and also rotate. I'm going to rotate it in the Z direction. So it will start at zero and it will end at 180. And I'm going to make it a pop animation. So let's see what happens. I tap on it and it rotates. Now I'm going to make a div that behaves the same way as this that will grow when this is tapped on. There's this initial rectangle of the actual selected item. So maybe I'll say selected item rectangle. And then beneath that, I'm going to make another rectangle. So I'll say drop down rectangle. And so this rectangle right now is the same size as this because I duplicated it. So this will also undergo a transition. This kind of transition will go from the height of 150. And let's just make it 600 to start and see how that looks. Now, since I already have an animation here and I'm going to want to apply that same animation to this interaction, I'm actually going to move things around. So I'm going to take these transitions and move it behind a pop animation. And then attach that pop animation to these transitions. So this transition, I want it to be applied to the height of this rectangle. So I'm going to take it and attach it right there. So let's see what happens. I tap here and nothing happens. Why did that happen? It only appears that nothing happens because it's all in this group called drop down and the height of this group is limited to 150. So instead we need to grow the height of this group. So I'm going to make it 600. So when I do, now we can see the full length of it. It looks a little too close to the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to move the Y position of the whole group upward. 
So now let's reset it. I tap and it grows. It could use a little bit more bounciness, so I'm going to increase the bounciness and decrease the speed a little bit. Now because this item is the selected item, I don't really want a shadow to be applied here. I only want the shadow for the outside element. So I'm going back to the selected item and I'm going to remove the shadow that's over there. So now there's no shadow. And this text layer looks a little bit big, so I'm going to decrease the size of this as well. So next I'm going to include some text for the other options. So I'm going to take this text layer and duplicate it several times. I want these elements to not be visible until the item is tapped on and that drawer is then visible. So in order to do that, I'm going to apply certain particular transitions and animations to occur here. So I'm going to add a transition of 0 to 1 of the opacity of all of these layers. So for all of these layers, I'm going to modify the opacity. So now when this is tapped on, the opacity of these will transition from 0 to 1. So I tap on it and now they all become opaque. But I'm also going to want there to be a slight animation going downward so it's clear that these items live in this div. I'm also just going to change this from a turn on to a flip so it's easier for me to transition between the states. So I'm going to add a transition and the first item ends at 180. So I might have it start at 160 and we can basically adjust this and see how it feels if 20 pixels is too much or little for it to transition. So I'm going to have it transition in the Y direction when it's tapped on and I'm going to apply that same kind of transition to the other options as well, but modify their Y position. So now let's try it out. I go like this. There is that slight animation. I honestly think it could animate a little more downward. And I think that these are coming in before this completely transitions. I can basically duplicate this pop animation, but have the speed be a little bit slower here. So I'm going to increase the speed to maybe 10 and then overrule that previous animation that I had there. So now let's try it out. It's a little better, but it's still a little bit too quick, so I'm going to increase that speed again. Or I might actually just replace this with another kind of animation. So it's a little bit easier to control. Go with a classic animation that will have an in out. With a pop animation, you can't really designate the actual duration of it, which is a little bit annoying. So that's why I'm going to go with a classic animation here and see if this is a little bit better since we will be able to control that timing duration. Okay, I think that this could also increase in distance. So instead of it starting at 160, I could see it starting at 150. I'm just gonna minus 10 from the start distances. I'm also going to want there to be a slight treatment around that small because that is the one that's currently selected. So we could do this a variety of different ways, but I think I'm just going to take that particular text and make it bold. I'm also going to want to create a small pin line underneath this so then this is completely distinct from the other items. So I'm going to go to this plus again and click rectangle. And this rectangle is going to go right underneath that initial drop down and it's going to have a very small height but a longer width so I'm going to make the width about five and place it right underneath here. Okay so this line is here but I'm going to want it to grow when that drop down is selected so again this will also go through a transition and I'll have it attach the same kind of transition that we have for these other elements at the top so I'm going to have the width of this item initially set to zero and then it will grow to the full width. 
So I'm going to take that transition, apply it to the width of that line, and attach it to that same animation we had at the beginning. Go like this, and then we'll see how it animates. This animation is a little too bouncy for that line, so it actually might attach to the same animation that we have for these ones and see how that works. Curves a little too quickly. So I'm going to give it its own animation. The other ones didn't really work for it, so I'm going to try this one and we'll see. Now it just looks like this element's a little too close to that line, so I'm just going to push the following elements down a little bit. So I'm going to go to these options and add 10 pixels to the end state for each one. The last thing I'm going to do is add a little hover state for the items. When I'm on top of each one, it actually highlights a little bit. I'm going to add another kind of rectangle. So I'm going to go to this plus, go to rectangle and place that layer. I'm just going to call it option one rectangle. And I'm going to do the same for the other options as well. So now I'm going to take these rectangles and set the initial color of them to white because I don't want them to be visible at all. But on hover, I'm going to want them to be visible. So then I'm going to go to each one and I'm going to go to touch and then hover. So now when I am over that state, you can see this hover becomes active. So when I am over that state, I'm going to want to modify the color of the element. So when that first rectangle is hovered on, I'm going to add a transition of the type color. So I'm going to second click and go to color. The start will be white and the end will be a light gray. And I'm going to affect the color of that layer. So when I go over it, you can see now there is a transition that occurs, but it's quite stark of a difference. So I'm actually going to make it a lighter gray. So I'm going to apply that same transition for the other rectangles. So now I'm going to have a little bit of an animation that occurs here, so it's smoother. So again, I'm adding a classic animation, quadratic in out, and I'm changing the duration of it. So now when I hover over it, it has that slight animation effect. So now I'm going to apply this for the other rectangles. So now when I hover over it, they have a slight hover effect. It looks like some of the alignment's a little bit off, so I think I'm going to actually increase the spacing between each item. So I'm going to increase the Y direction by another 10 pixels. So now let's see. That looks a lot better. Okay, this is great. It just looks like this is a little bit off, like the bottom of this. I can still see some white peeking through. So I'm just going to go to that original drop-down rectangle and decrease the height by about 5 pixels. See if that helps. So when I refresh the prototype, it still looks like that drop down is visible. And that's because we didn't set when we want these option rectangles to be visible. So in this way, they're always visible, which is not what we want to happen. So instead, I need to specify when I want these rectangles to be visible. So to do this, there are multiple ways that we can do this. We can enable them after the switch is turned on. We can set it to when this rectangle is dropped. There are multiple ways that we can handle this. So the way that I'm going to do it is that I'm going to say that when this drop down rectangle equals 595, which means that it is down, then I want to enable these rectangles. So I'm going to take the work I've done so far. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to push it down. And I'm going to add a little bit of logic right here. So I'm going to say that when that transition equals 595, then I want to set these rectangles as true. So I'm going to take these options and basically enable them. So now let's try it out. I refresh it and I tap.
So just to go over what we did, we created a drop down div, which is a rectangle that contains a text and an arrow layer. When I tap on this interactive element, the arrow swivels, this line appears and the other text appears. We also included hover states for the actual items. And if someone were to tap on this area again, it reverts the whole interaction. So that's how I create custom animations for drop down menus. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.